Hi, I'm Mohamed Zaboy, and I'm an entrepreneur from Soweto. Soweto's come a long way, from a small township to a mini city of its own. Soweto's got some really, really nice suburbs, like Deep Cliff Extension, but the locals call it Deep Cliff Expensive. Orlando is known as a suburb that had the first brick houses built in Soweto. Orlando Stadium for its iconic games between Kaiser Chiefs and Pirates. And most importantly, Villagazi Street, where Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu resided. To the west of Soweto, you find suburbs of Dobsonville and Protea. These two suburbs are actually very cosmopolitan, fresh, young, and very new. Right next door to Soweto, we have a neighboring suburb, which is Aldorado Park. For a little adventure and a little fun, Soweto's got so many night spots, from the News Cafe at Mamponya Mall, to your Villagazi Street Sakumzis, to just chilling at Chaf Posi just between the towers and having a simple bright face, Chisanyama. Something very close to my heart is actually seeing people move back into Soweto growing businesses, remodeling homes. It merely says to us that Soweto is a growing city. There's way more to this place than what we think. Soweto needs to be discovered daily. I'm so proud to call Soweto my home, and this is my neighborhood. Welcome to episode 36 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamandunga Kumalo. It's a Monday. We're officially in level three restrictions. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are celebrating. Not only are you able to go buy your liquor, but we also know that, of course, estate agents can officially operate under level three restrictions, which, of course, is good news for a lot of followers of this podcast. This evening, we're looking at a topic that we haven't quite explored over the weeks. And I think it's one of those things that so many of us probably have an interest in, but really have a number of question marks when it comes to how do we best navigate it? You're probably wondering, what are we going to be exploring? We're going to be looking at the opportunities in the townships or the property market. Uh, we're going to be exploring how you can potentially get into that market. The demand, is there a demand? How do you best capture that demand? And also some of the do's and don'ts when you're looking at that market. And to help us better understand um, you know, the township property market, I'm joined this evening by Utiko Mushabi, who's the founder of Rumsa that deals primarily with the Gasi property market and ensuring that they're a great outlet um, for people who are interested in letting their particular properties in the township and for tenants, of course, who are looking for those properties. Diko, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for uh, inviting me. So I think, you know, before we even go anywhere, because I, I certainly want us to have a conversation about the work that Roomstar does and how it basically captures that particular market and how it's so important in the value chain of the Gassi property market. Perhaps let's take a few steps back and look at, you know, how I'll say the landscape of where the market currently is right now. I think a lot of us who might have a little bit of familiarity with the market probably recognize it as, you know, I'm a, I'm a back room. 
uh, when you lived in the main house and more often than not, it would be relatively informal. So you grow up knowing it's okay. Ekaya, there's that back room that they kind of let and there'd be a family that sometimes stays there for an extended period of time. They pay rental some months, maybe they don't. However, we never really did look at that as a formal market or something that we can now, you know, advertise and even perhaps want to get into. So perhaps give us a landscape of where we are in terms of that property market in the townships. Okay. So, so like you mentioned uh, earlier, so we, we've always had bedrooms. Uh, bedrooms have always been there, particularly in townships. Um, most of the time it was, it was you know, you, you have a small family. Uh, the kids grow up, they want a bit of a privacy. So, you know, back rooms are built, but then they, they leave after a couple of years, they get married, they want to start their own families. Um, <clears throat> and then you have all those rooms now being vacant. So that's how it's been. And that's how this market uh, started. Um, so, so, the, so, so the back room market, that, that's how it started. And uh, it's, it's been evolving ever since. It's, 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 it's been known previously as a, and sort of like an informal market, but I think, uh, over the past um, five to about 10, 15 years, I mean, sorry, five, 10 years, um, it's really evolved, it's growing, uh, it's going on strong. Uh, particularly, uh, it's influenced by, uh, if you have to look at nationally, um, we have a lot of uh, 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 um, guys coming from our neighboring countries, uh, migrants coming from our neighboring countries, so they they obviously help on, on that market. Then nationally as well, you have a lot of people migrating from um, rural areas into uh, uh, cities, of course because of jobs, because they're looking for jobs, so that that helps because of the pricing of of of, of those rooms and, and and the rental and so forth. So that so you have a lot of people fuel in that market. But at, at another another uh, uh, um, uh, people that are that are also fuel in that market. Um, uh, are mostly, you know, we have young people that actually don't want to move away from townships and areas like that, but they want to stay close to their families, but they want a little bit of privacy. So they also uh, uh, um, form a, a sub uh, part of the market. Uh, and, and another, just based on our research, another uh, uh, market that we've seen emerge uh, in the, <clears throat> I think about two years or so is that you find a lot of young graduates and a lot of young people that are working that are still working towards buying their own homes still saving towards their own homes uh but you know they so they start within the room market first before they do that so then they start within the room market they rent first and then they move on to buying either a, a flat or or, or, or low-cost housing and so forth. so that that's what fueling that uh, a, a room market right now so it, it has obviously made um, investment in, in the Kasi market uh, a little bit more uh, available to a lot of people. So, uh, yeah, so that, that's that. I think if you're just joining us at home, I'm speaking to Uteko Mutlambi, who's the founder of Roomstar. We're talking about some of the opportunities in the in the township property market. If you have any questions or comments, perhaps you're an investor in that particular market, do send them through. If you're exploring getting into that market and perhaps you're struggling with running some of your numbers or uncertain about how to best navigate tapping into the Gassi property market, then do send us through those questions. Dick, I want us to talk about you know some of the demand. I mean, you've already sort of um, you know done a really good job. It's Splitting the different kinds of people who are potentially interested in, 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 in that market. And some of them, of course, it's more often than not, they're starting sort of like the first step in their property ladder because perhaps they might not afford um, places that have higher rental um, or that place is quite conveniently placed. So it's on the main route. They're basically getting onto one taxi and then they're finding themselves, you know, in the CBD and then perhaps going to wherever it is that they work. What's the landscape landscape of the demand? Because I think if you're watching the show and you're thinking, okay, maybe I have, um, you know, the family home and we're not really utilizing the back rooms because all of us have moved out and we've got a little bit of money. Um, we want to maybe build, um, you know, those, those nice rooms, which we'll talk to a little bit because I know a lot of people are also looking at building quality uh, bachelor uh, rooms as opposed to just, having an empty room and just thinking a tenant is going to go by it. But there really has been quite a significant amount of work that's been put into the quality of the offering. 
What would you say the demand looks like? I mean, is this a kind of market that an investor should be looking into or should you just rather go into the suburban or relatively suburban and CBD market instead of you know, exploring this market? I mean, you deal with the demand side um, where you've got obviously the, the landlords, but also you, you also get the influx of the actual tenants who are looking for a place. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. So, sure. The demand is quite huge. I mean, it's really, like I said, I think based on the reasons that I alluded on earlier, it's it's really a, a big market and a and a great market. Um, it's it's an out, it's a market that's a state estimated to 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 be transacting at at least nine billion rand per year. So it's a huge market, and it will continue to grow. Uh, part of the reasons being the reasons that I've, I've alluded to uh, uh, earlier on, but at the same time, it's not only um, I think uh, people only thought or only know, used to know back rooms just for in the township areas. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot. So you have the township areas, you have the mining uh, uh, areas. Uh, pe- a lot of people in the mining areas don't come from the mine, those mining areas, come from elsewhere. And they have uh, uh, living out allowances, but they don't actually want to build uh, homes in, in, in those uh, uh, mining areas. They rather rent and then build at home. So that obviously then uh, creates a, a market. So it, it, it's a really big market. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, I think, I think uh, I don't know if I've answered your question or you need me to dig in more. But I think, yeah, so it is quite a, 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 a huge market that, oh, and, oh, sorry, just before I forget. So another, so, so it's not only, uh, the trend is not only in townships. We see, we've, all, we've also seen uh, the, the, the room market also emerging uh, within the, suburban areas and the reason being that a lot of people have helpers so if you have a helper um and you know you don't want them to knock off it and you knock off from work at five o'clock at, at night i mean at, in the evening and you get home at about seven o'clock you have kids at home and so forth so you 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 would want your helper or the security guard however to knock off at about eight o'clock so then so there's some investors and some developers that have cre- uh, developed some rooms back rooms within the suburban areas to house that particular market so that you can at least eight o'clock or so go drop off your helper and be able to pick them up at, at around six o'clock in the morning before you go back at work. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a market that's slowly evolving. And as you said earlier on, the, the, also the profile of a tenant is changing. Mm. And, uh, you know, it, uh, long ago you used to have, it, it just used to cater to the, the, to the lower LSM, but not anymore. So you have, you know, young graduates, like I said, young, young people that are working, and so they're also looking for better type, better type units. They're also looking for things like Wi-Fi, air conditioning, um, you know, DSTV and those types. So the profile is also changing, so which is also uh, creating a market on its, on, on, on its own. So Digo, I want to actually look at some of the opportunities and threats um, within the Gassi property market. And we'll look at the, the, the opportunities after we uh, come back from the ad break. But before we go on that ad break, perhaps let's explore some of the, the threats, because I think um, a lot of people have a number of question marks. And I've certainly seen interested investors who perhaps don't live in that particular area, want to buy a place and want to get it at a very discounted amount. Um, and you might have, let's say Utiko has got a title deed for the family home, um, or he doesn't have a title deed, but then goes and sells the family home, um, you know, cashes in the money only for it to later emerge that actually Uptiko was not the rightful place to even sell that particular place. Um, and you've now bought it at a counted amount and you think, look, I've just made a killing. Um, and the intention for you is, of course, to build those back rooms and those quality, you know, bachelor rooms in the back. But then, of course, that becomes quite a, a big issue. And we've seen quite a lot of that, particularly within the township market. What are some of the threats that prospective investors need to be looking out for? And perhaps as part of their due diligence as they explore which properties to, to um, you know, chase while they're looking um, for that property to invest in? Okay. All right. So so the first thing that, uh, that investors have to definitely do is check with the deeds office. You definitely have to check with the deeds office who, on exactly who owns that uh, piece of property or land or so, uh, because we've seen in a lot of, um, especially when it comes to us black people, we've seen in township areas, we've seen there's a lot of family wars on who owns that uh, the property or not, and there's a lot of fake title deeds and so forth. So you have to have to have to check with the with the deeds office on exactly who's who owns the property and whether they do have the right 
to do sell their property. So that, that's number one. You definitely have to have to check uh, on who owns the property. And then, uh, um, sorry, what, what was the second question? Sorry, Zom, it was a lengthy one. No, so it's, we're exploring the threats um, and what they should be looking out for when they're doing their due diligence. Yeah, so, so it's mostly that. So you, know, you need to look into that and, and uh, into title deeds on who exactly owns the title deed. Um, and then also check, there's, there's also agents within the room uh, uh, businesses. So you have to also check with a couple of agents. They can also help uh, to, to make sure that you go through some uh, due diligence there so that you, you, you do the right thing. But at the same time, so another, another thing that one can do is that if you, so for example, if, you're not, if you don't have money to invest and you want to, 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 to help, to get help in terms of investment, there's a couple of um, institutions, funding institutions such as TERF, uh, via Umastandi that helps people how, uh, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, investment funding. Um, so you can talk to those guys and they also do help with uh, some due diligence uh, to see exactly who owns the property uh, and how. And so you have guys like Turf, uh, a company called iBuild. Uh, you have the other guys that are really, their the funding model is quite interesting called Hustlenomics. Um, and then you have other guys called Inju. So when you when you deal with those guys i think they will be able to help you to do proper due diligence and we've certainly explored um or briefly spoken about tough i think one of our earlier guests uh, a few episodes ago had actually bought a block of flats and it was in the process of buying a second block of flats who had used tough as a funding um institution and we promised our viewers at home that we'll definitely bring them in to talk about some of their offerings of course if you're interested in you know um, investing in the inner city tough is one of the financial go-to institutions another um you know initiative or rather product that they've recently launched i think it was last Mastandi that focuses primarily on the township um, property market and yeah. that's also another product that we'll talk to them extensively about uh, especially because they've now got a few case studies they, they can share with us um, and really just to track some of the success of the project that they have funded. We're going to go for a quick break and when we come back we're going to look at some of the opportunities within the township property market but also look at what Roomstead does and the work that they're essentially doing in filling the gap within the property uh, township market. Of course, if you are watching us from YouTube um, or rather from Facebook, you know that we're running that YouTube competition. So all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel, take that screenshot, share it right here, and you stand a chance of winning 1,000 rands at the end of the week. So we'll be announcing the winner right here on the Private Property Podcast of that 1,000 rand prize. Of course, we're going to be announcing two winners as usual right here on the show. So do get subscribing on our um, YouTube uh, page that's private property on the YouTube and we're going to take a quick break I'm still joined by Tiko Mulhabi who is the founder of Roomstein after this we'll be looking at opportunities and do's and don'ts when you want to get into the Gassi property market we'll be back just after this
Welcome back to episode 36 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzaman Tungwa Kumala. This evening, I'm joined by Utiko Mushabi, who's the founder of Roomstar. We're exploring opportunities in the township property market. So if you've ever wanted to get into the township property market, perhaps you don't know where to start, you don't know some of the things that you're looking out for, if you don't even know some of the opportunities that might be there, then this is the podcast for you. Before the break, we looked at some of the threats that are in the market, and of course, one of them is to make sure that you adequately do your due diligence. You want to make sure that the title deed of a particular property that you're buying belongs to the people that are actually selling you that property. We've heard a number of horror stories when it comes to, you know, title deed drama, when it comes to a lot of uh, houses in the township. It is, as Diego has mentioned earlier, quite a big uh, market with a lot of demand and really different types of players and, you know, people within different LSMs who are looking for space. And sometimes perhaps there isn't enough stock or certainly quality stock in the space. And we'll talk a little bit about how Roomstar comes into the, um, you know, into meeting some of that demand or making sure that they provide a platform or service that prospective tenants can access in the event where they find a home. Now, I did promise our viewers at home that after the break, we'll be looking at some of the opportunities that are in the market, uh, you know, to go for people who are looking at it, whether there are different ways you can go about it. I mean, I've seen a few interesting models that people have um, explored and are using in managing their GASI uh, portfolio, which sometimes is quite big for your cash flow purposes. I think it can be quite a big cash cow. And certainly the investors that I've seen using it have used that to be their primary cash cow. What are, the, some, what are some of the different ways that you've seen people do it, whether it's renting up the house, making the house a double story, building back rooms and those sort of things. Perhaps share with our viewers, you know, some of those opportunities that you've seen out there in the market. Okay, good. So, so the obvious one would be if you if if you or your parents or somebody in your family owns a house where you got space at the back you can build you can build rooms um so that would be number one i think that's the most obvious one uh, so the second one would be for you to find a piece of land uh then go ahead and develop it and build rooms uh, so that would be the second one so so you gotta look at you obviously gotta look at so not obviously but you gotta look at um uh things like you know, the economy where, or rather where the jobs are at. So for me, it, I've always looked at, we've always looked at areas that are close to the, where the jobs are close to the cities, uh, because those are the areas that have more demand. Um, universities just before COVID-19 were also quite a, 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 a big uh, uh, places to look into. So so those those are mostly the, the areas that one needs to look into when you're building um, these homes. And then of course, because we are dealing with property location, location, um, um, is the best thing. Um, and then, of course, um, you got to look at the finishes as well, parking, that type of stuff, whether you can get parking in. Um, as I said earlier on, that, that the profile of a tenant is quite, has changed quite drastically. So you got to look at all of that stuff. Um, so, and then you'll be able to, to make a decision on, on, you know, on what, what would be a best investment and get the better yields. And I think that's this is where I, I actually wanted to talk a little bit about Roomstar. Uh, perhaps share with our viewers at home what Roomstar essentially does. We've been talking a little bit uh, about the, the service that you provide, but haven't quite answered the what what exactly does Roomstar do? Okay, so Roomstar is an online platform, uh, just the same as private property and other of your competitors. Um, so where we 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 link, so it's an online platform. A portal where we link a tenant to a, I mean sorry a prospective tenant to a landlord online um, and it, we only deal with rooms and uh, roommates so if you're looking for a, for a, for a room uh, in all nine provinces of South Africa um, uh, if you're looking for or a, a roommate so we you know we, we can be able to facilitate that it's a free platform so it, it's 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 all free uh, there's agents on it so agents themselves can build so if you are an agent you can build your own little Hub on, onto the uh, onto, onto the platform, and what we what we have built onto our platform is that we built a, a mapping system that allows prospective tenants when they look at a particular room at a particular at a particular place uh, to be able to view all the uh, important amenities for the for obviously that LSM that we're catering for. So so if you click on a room, you can be able to see at the closest taxi ranks around you, close bus stations, train stations, malls, school. And so forth, so that you know a tenant can easily 
make a decision on what type of properties they should be looking for. And then on, on, on the platform as well, we also have uh, service providers. So anybody can, anyone who's a service provider is related to housing or room services can list their services and one can be able to find them just on the mapping system. So, so in a nutshell, that's what rooms are does. So it helps a tenant uh, and uh, so it helps to connect your tenant and a, and a, and a landlord uh, in that particular uh, space. Um, so previously, and the reason why we, we, we Roomster was founded is was previously people had to travel from pillar to post uh, to go view a room and only to find out it's not really what they were looking for. So, you know, so we, so we helping with that. Uh, what we've also helped with uh, as well is that, that the room market has always been perceived as an informal, informal market. So we, we are actually helping to facilitate the to make it more of a formal market. Uh, we're helping people with things like lease agreements. So people to have lease agreements and, and, and things like that to, for them to understand what they're getting themselves into. Uh, because people, uh, previously people just used to rent for like three, four months when it comes to rooms. But now people are taking up to at least two year leases. So they obviously have to understand what they're getting themselves into. So that's, that's basically what Trumpsa does in Arachia. And I think, you know, the, one of the important things are about that particular service is the formalizing of that township property market. I think so many things around the township value chain in its entirety typically tends to be regarded as informal. And while there's a lot of value to, to the informality of it, um, and I mean, I come from Ekasi myself, so I also understand um, how, that, how that's a function of the way that we live, but also how that actually does work um, in certainly in providing some of the goods and services that we want, but we're also, also realizing that as we're getting, I'll say, more and more exposed to other formal markets, you certainly want certain aspects of your livelihood to also be formalized. So we're already seeing things like, um, for example, bicycle deliveries. So if you ever wanted deliveries within the township market, we're now able to have those deliveries. So if you were ordering, you know, Amakwenya uh, within your neighborhood, they can now be delivered to your house. So services yeah. like that are becoming increasingly quite popular within the township yeah. because we are, of course, you know, familiar with how they play out in the more formal market or like in the suburbs or in the CBD. So I think it's certainly something that is needed, um, especially when you look at something like a lease agreement. I mean, I can imagine somebody living in a place who want to make sure that you have a, a, you know, the right lease in place, there was an inspection done, your landlord is not going to come back and say, no, you must get out of my house, this is my property. So I think the formalizing of living spaces in the township is such an important one. So Digo, for any viewers at home who are looking at going into the property, um, the township property market, what would your three tips be for, for those viewers at home? Um, so my three tips would be, you know, first of all, just to, to, to start off with, I think people don't realize just how much, you know, potential this market has, number one. Number two, um, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to get into this market compared to getting into other types of market like buying a, a, into suburban areas and so forth. So I think, and, and the cost of, of, of building uh, per square meter, if, you, if you're building a flat or um, uh, um, a house, you're looking at at least about 4,000, 5,000 rand a square meter with, with, the, with the rooms uh, or, or in, into the gas market, you're looking at at least about 1,300 to about 2,000 based on your finishes on your uh, per square meter. So, so the opportunities are, are quite big. It's easy for, for one to get into. So the tips that I would, that would give someone that's, that's looking into starting into this market is look at areas that are, first of all, you look at areas that are close to, uh, I think as I mentioned earlier, that are close to um, uh, um, uh, factories and, and, and jobs and so forth. You know, th those, those uh, 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 properties are forever occupied. So that's, that's one that you need to look into. Uh, look into areas that, so, Sometimes at, at the same time as well, maybe try to avoid areas that have always been there, like your Soweto's and Tembisa and so forth. There's other areas, well, we, we're talking Joburg, such as Cosmo City and, and other areas, areas like that, that are, that are quite easy to buy into. Um, so you, you're obviously getting low. That, that's the number one fundamental rule of, of any property investment, you buy in low, and then, um, and then obviously you, you'll reap the rewards um, uh, later on. And uh, the third one would, would be to uh, 
do due diligence all the time. So make sure that everything that you do is above board and yeah, so that's mostly that. So what's important for viewers at home, you want to do your due diligence, you want to explore different areas and not just the usual suspects like your Soweto or Tembisa, but really, you know, you want to stretch yourself, especially if, for example, you're in Gauteng or even any other part of the country for that matter, uh, in, to make sure that you're not only looking at the areas that we're all very familiar to where property prices may perhaps even be quite high. So buying low might not even be an option for you, but you also want to make sure that you target those areas that are close to economic hubs, whether it's factories or any other types of hubs, and even close to public transport routes, because somebody who wants a back room, wants to, you know, take a very short walk to the nearest bus station or wherever taxis actually are. Diko, we're going to leave it right there. For viewers at home, Diko's contact details and Roomster's contact details are right here below in the link right um, on Facebook. So do make sure to reach out to them in the event where you're looking for a room or looking to place your room um, on their particular platform. Diko, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. And that was Deko Moshabi, who's the founder of Roomstar. We've been exploring the township property market and the opportunities that are there, some of the do's and don'ts, opportunities and threats in that market. And it's certainly one that we're going to be talking quite a lot about. We've been talking about tough and we've mentioned them before. We did promise that we're going to be bringing them on and we'll definitely keep that promise as we do. Uh, of course, if you've got any topics that you want us to cover, do send them through. We're more than happy to bring in experts that will help us better understand that issue. And you know, to viewers at home, we are of course running that YouTube competition. So make sure that you subscribe to the private property YouTube page, uh, take a screenshot, share it right here on Facebook, and you stand a chance of winning that 1,000 Rand prize on Friday. That's it for me this evening on episode 33, or rather 36 of the Private Property Podcast. I've been your host, Uzaman Dunga Kumalo. We're back again tomorrow evening with episode 37. Have a good night and keep staying safe. Hi, I'm Nicolene Terblanche and I'm part of the SA Women's Hockey Team and I'm the Technical Director of Tax Hockey and I'm also the Assistant Coach for the first two ladies. I moved to Ferry Glen about five years ago. Ferry Glen is a really safe place and the people are really kind. Some of my friends live really close by in suburbs like Equestria and Olympus. In the morning I will wake up, make myself a cup of coffee, go for a jog in the Ferry Glen Nature Reserve or even just in the neighborhood. It's safe, quiet, and the environment is really nice. I love Ferry Glen because I'm near the city, but I'm not in the city. I like to go to Pretoria Country Club clear my mind, I'm on my own, to relax and just to enjoy a round of golf. In Pretoria East we really have nice uh, places to visit like Menland Mall and Brooklyn Mall that is really close by. There are also a lot of top schools in the area like Pretoria Boys High and Yoshko Menlo Park. One of the most beautiful places to see the whole of Pretoria is the Fort Capricorn Viewpoint. And that's my neighborhood. <laughs>